Hello again, dear Francophiles, and welcome to Périgord. On this video, we're going to present to you the city of Sarlat, because this is where we live, and it's one of the most beautiful in France. So enjoy the video, and we'll talk some more in the end. See ya! The founders chose the site for two obvious reasons. One, its remote location away from the Dordogne River and its risks in terms of Viking attacks. Two, water. They established a monastery in the Dale of the Cuse, a Dordogne tributary. The legend says that Charlemagne himself had given precious relics to the monastery, such as a holy thorn of the crown of thorns and a piece of the true cross. Anyways, the centuries do not match. It's mostly the remains of Saint Sacerdos that will provide Sala with attention, pilgrimages and resources. The abbey prospers and the town develops under its protection. Here, behind the cathedral, in the Cour des Fontaines, you can see the water allowing the human establishment in Sarlat, but also responsible for most of their problems. Floodings, epidemics, you name it. But now, let's take the secret passage to get to the old cemetery. Another important step in the history of the town was the visit in the 12th century of the renowned preacher Bernard de Clairvaux or Saint Bernard. During his visit, he would have given miraculous bread to the people to cure their illnesses, but it's probably a metaphor saying that he gave people ideas to cure their soul from the heresies. This tower, the Lantern of the Dead, would have been built in his honor. Actually, that's one of the many theories about the mysteries around its construction. The truth is, the historians do not even all agree. There are several major theories about it and we're going to see them together. Could be a chapel to pray for the dead. Or a beacon to guide the pilgrims through the night all the way to the relics of Saint Sacerdos. Finally, there is the alternative explanation about the telluric nodes saying that the tower is implanted in a point with special energies. You take your pick. In the 13th century, Sala will be divided by feuds between secular and religious communities. The matters in question will be about of course, who gets to administrate the city and collect the taxes. Until one day, during Mass, somebody shot the abbot with a crossbow in the middle of the preach. Until this very day, it remains a total mystery who did it. At least, like other privileged people, he got to be buried in the church or near it, so that he would go faster to paradise. This will be a pivotal point in the history of Salah. The signature of the Book of Peace will forever divide Sala in two equal powers, the Abbey on the right and on the other side the bourgeoisie under the protection of the St. Mary's Church. But it's not just any Saint Mary, it's Saint Mary du Mercadil, which means she's always been looking over the market ever since the Middle Ages until today. And you can buy local products such as goat cheese, walnuts and products from walnut, asparagus and of course strawberries. <music> Finally, in the 14th century, the abbey will be transformed into a bishopric and the church into a cathedral. The 
the building site in fact will take several centuries because it will be constantly interrupted by epidemics, wars or bankruptcies. In fact, the bell tower will only be finished around the 17th century. But one cannot evoke the 14th century without mentioning the Black Death or the plague. In fact, Sarla was severely hit by it as well as with all the other plague epidemics in history. On such occasions, his virgins were installed in the corner of every building to eradicate the evil and also to be thanked for curing the inhabitants. There are about 51 of them left in town and if you look at... Uh, no. In order to quell the rivalries between the bourgeoisie and the church, while keeping a strong hand on everything, the kings of France had created the Présidial, a court of royal justice led by king surgeons and local officials called Consul. The tables have turned, and now it is their time. During the 15th and the 16th centuries, the great families of Sarla prospered and earned noble titles through marriages, rewards or purchases. Yes, it was possible. Moving up the social ladder, they wanted to show it to the world with architecture. Sumptuous town palaces with a tower of nobility sprung out of the ground all over town. And that sala has been preserved intact until today. The best example of social climbing is l'Hôtel de Malville. It was commissioned by Jean de Vienne, a former stable boy noticed by clerks for his wits and provided with education. He climbed as far as to becoming secretary to Henry IV and court of the auditor's president. To celebrate his success, he wanted a luxurious house in his hometown. And this time we're in luck because we can actually enter in this one and see what a historical monument really looks like from the inside. So let's go. So we've passed all the inhabited floors and this time we even get to go in the attic. Let's go. Hello, Annelise. Hi. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Huddersfield in Yorkshire. In Yorkshire. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. It's a beautiful building. Yeah. And it's a wonderful uh, attic. Yeah. Uh, immediate, I started painting in here about 17 years ago as a private space mm -hmm. and immediately I, I felt that this was a, a magical, uh, mm -hmm. like an inspiration and so I, uh, uh, my work started to transform almost immediately. About mm -hmm. six years ago I was sat in the middle as usual and three stones fell two meters away from where I was sitting and so th yes this uh, most stones, if they fall, they tend to fall off the outside and that's why I never go out now. <laughs> I, I stay here. Uh, uh, but yeah. Uh, well, because they all weigh about three to five kilos? Oh. And even the weight of the roof, there's about 250 tons of roof in this room alone. Wow. So it's quite a spectacular f uh, way of making a roof. Yeah. So, uh, how come you stayed in Sala? I mean, I, what well, drew you to the place? Uh, I got offered a job uh, uh, 23 years ago, uh, just outside of Dom, uh -huh. and things weren't going well for me in England at the time, so I accepted this job, and I was working at a barbecue restaurant, working for a mad English vicar. So again, this is a very uh, right. winding path, mm -hmm. and I, I immediately uh, was just loved it here. So, in a few words, can you tell me what your work is about? Yes, um, spiritual renaissance. 
and we're, I think we're already in a transition from a, a materialistic and ego-driven world uh, to another, uh, uh, like a, 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 a finding the balance between nature and, and again, spiritual renaissance, very important. And uh, yeah, inshallah, make two, <laughs> two years. Well, that's great. Right. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, cool. See you soon. <laughs> and you, uh, merci. The most emblematic house of Sarla would be this one. Built for a family of consuls and wealthy merchants, it is admirable in every way. Its facade, Italian style, just like the bishop's palace in front, and sculptured with the portraits of the family to advertise for themselves. But mostly, it's the birthing place of one of the finest minds of the French Renaissance, Étienne de la Boétie. Often renowned for being Montaigne's best friend, he was a lot more than that. Enlightened thinker, he wrote, among others, Discourse on Voluntary Servitude, which contains the seeds of the French Revolution 200 years ahead. But before stepping into the modern era, we have to evoke the wars. The wars of religion in the 16th century and of course the Hundred Years' War in the Middle Ages. Interesting fact, whichever the war was, they always managed to choose the right side. The side of the French against the British or the side of the Catholic against the Protestants. So that in the end, each time, they were rewarded by the kings of France by large amounts of money and they could rebuild the town. It is then that the city chose its emblem, the salamander. Magic symbol of eternal regeneration, it couldn't be more fitting than in this context. As for the modern age, there will be major transformations. In the context of counter-reformations, many, many convents and nunneries will be established everywhere in Sala. The general hospital will be installed in the center of town and the sisters will take care of the sick. The medieval rampart will be mostly demolished to make room for a more modern and bigger city. The transformations of the society took their toll and the revolution arrived. But far enough from Paris, Sarla never knew the violence of the terror. Still, they destroyed the church of Saint Mary and they dissolved the bishopric. The shortly renamed Place de la Liberté got its tree of freedom. And ever since, these pine tree called May are installed on buildings each Labor Day, May 1st. You can see them all over the region. The 19th century and the Industrial Revolution put an end to countless old activities. In Dordogne, it was particularly so for the Gabat business, which has always brought wood to Bordeaux in exchange for bringing back goods to the valley. As a result, the valley was progressively abandoned in favor of bigger cities and the promises of work, and it sort of fell asleep. Meanwhile, the old town center knew yet another transformation by the creation of this very long and straight axis, the Rue de la République. One of the major steps in the modern history of Sarla is the Loi Malraux in 1962. In the early 20th century, a lot of old town centers fall apart by lack of interest. Thankfully for Sala, its beauty had already fascinated numerous artists and architects through the years. But what changed with Malraux's law is that it extended the protection of a few individual buildings to an entire district. And this time, with a solid project and the money to rehabilitate the buildings in their ancient glory, as well as providing them with modern comfort. The rehabilitation of Sarla was a first in France and became a model for all the future restoration projects in the country. In total, 
40 years of work and 42 restored monuments, streets and squares. The 21st century will continue this line of work with the restoration of St. Mary's Church by the Salabon celebrity Jean Nouvel. Saving it and transforming it into a covered market enclosed behind these impressive monolithic iron doors and the recent addition of a panoramical elevator in the old bell tower. <laughs> They also chose to reinstall the gas system in all of the lampposts of Sarla. It gives the streets and the building this very specific orange color and you really feel like you're traveling through time. this medieval maze, you can get to more animated places like the Place de la Liberté to have a drink with your friends. It's super animated in the summertime, there are street artists, music, just enjoy. And on top of that, it comes at no surprise that many movies were shot here, French as well as American. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it gave you the will to come to Sarla. We are going to make the next video about a castle nearby, it's going to be a great one. But if you have any suggestions, don't hesitate and keep following us on Facebook. Subscribe, thumbs up and everything. And please ask yourself, voulez-vous coucher avec Sarla? <laughs>